you'll be pleased to know that I haven't got my sermon. Well, I have got my sermon notes, but I, it, it, they didn't sort of come out today. But I'm not, I'm not going to. It's not going to be a long uh, sermon. But I'm going to talk about the spiritual gifts and practical use of the spiritual gifts within church and this has all been brilliant hasn't it hasn't it been good hearing testimony what god, how god's speaking to people you know and, and and all this god is wanting to speak through us and, and for us to speak to one another in actual fact and encourage one another in the lord so we we had an extended look at um the speaking in tongues particularly as a personal gift that is something very precious in our in our prayer um walk with god and i walk with god this uh, um, and then we looked at the prophecy uh, last week and the, the really encouragement and, and one of the encouragements that i got from last week and so you you're better to access this on the um our youtube channel and the website i'm guessing um was to believe and to be ready for God to speak through you in your day-to-day -day interactions with your brothers and sisters and just in general in your life, believing that God is wanting to give you a word so that your conversation can jump up several levels as you have a word of God to speak into somebody's life. Um, and it, it, it helped me in, like I was helped uh, Heath, deliver a, a chair uh, to, to, to someone that, the other day. And as we went to deliver, now Heath is an amazing guy. He's, he's doing um, the youth at the minute. Uh, Heath is such a good guy at talking to people. He is so friendly, really puts people at their ease and everything. So he'd had previous phone conversations with a lady where the, the, the chair was to be delivered. It, they, it, they were selling a chair on. and. We got there, and we were already best friends with this lady, who, who had, we'd never ever met, but because of Heath's conversation with, with her. Um, and so we got the chair in and set it up and everything. And then as we go, and she, she gives us a hug. And this, this you know, this, this, she wasn't a stranger anymore. And as we were just going, I just got out of my pocket, I got a, a piece with God, um, little tracts there should be some on the table out there please get them and use them and i just said look can i give this to you um the message in this changed my life 30 years ago uh, simple as that and she took it and and they said oh my, my brother-in-law's a baptist minister of a you know a large church my nephew got um baptized in this church <laughs> And uh, and then, but I was, and I was thinking, well, Lord, give me a word, just a word, just to speak into her, her life, yes, yeah, something a bit greater than that. I've, I've given her a tract. I've, I've shared my testimony in that to that extent. And but it just encouraged me to say, Lord, is there something more? And I could talk about. She talked about almost like, well, sort of life happens to you, doesn't it? And I was able just to share a word about God has got good plans for us. And it's when we give our lives to him that we can walk into those good plans. And, the diff and that conversation happened in the space of two or three minutes. So, but just trusting for God to raise it. And when we need the, the word of prophecy, a word of knowledge, and, and wisdom, or whatever it is to, to be speaking into those lives. And we, to, for us to be um, ready for it. Now... I'm going to talk about practical use of the gifts of the Spirit, particularly, okay, this morning. And let's just look at a couple of Bible verses, and then um, I'll tell you what I'm, I'll talk about really quickly. So f first one is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. It says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Okay, so Paul didn't want them to be uninformed. God doesn't want us to be uninformed about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is why we're teaching about it. But, you know, with education and learning about things, you have to apply yourself, don't you? So it, it isn't just about hearing someone talk about it. It's actually starting to interact, finding more yourself, and then practically as well, starting to engage with it. And that's, you know, how you, you, you start to learn. So... Um, then let's, let's move on to 1 Corinthians 14, and it goes like this. Follow the way of love 
and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. Just what, that is a challenge for us, isn't it? And I, and I hear it, I hear this desire amongst some people to say, do you know, I want the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. And that desire, and is it in your life, that desire? Because that's the encouragement for us to eagerly desire it. And, you know, and I think God is stirring something within us in this church, within us as a movement to eagerly desire. And it, who, um, you don't have to put your hand up, but some of you might think, oh, I eagerly desire for somebody else to have the gifts of the, of the Spirit. Anybody, anybody, I bet some of you would say, yeah, actually, do you know, that, that's what I feel. I, I really want the gifts of the Spirit, but I hope it's somebody else. It, it needs to be somebody else. Actually, God wants to use you and me, whoever we are, whatever our experience and, and all that. And God isn't, he's not um, an unfair God. He distributes the gifts severally and all over as he wills. And uh, he wants to use us. That's not even, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to preach this full sermon another time, to be fair. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. If you wouldn't like to say, well, what is good prophecy? The, the normal type of prophecy within a church is uh, to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. That is the norm. Yes, God does actually sort of speak other words into the, the church, but that is the normal type of prophecy. So you might think, oh, the word that I, I feel like God's saying, like, take heart. You know, and you think, well, that's not exactly brain science, is it? Or brain surgery or whatever. I remember one of the first times I prophesied, um, I felt I had a word, and I, and I just sort of spoke it out in a meeting, God loves you. How, how sort of like basic is that? Somebody came up to me afterwards and said, I so needed to hear that today. And you, know, and you think, well, anyone can say God loves you. But when God is impromptuing you just to say something, even if it is something so basic as that, it's, it's, it's to do with the hearer as well, and the power of the, the word going into somebody's life. So if you need to hear it. And so I, I actually, all the time, when, when I'm sort of praying or leading a meeting, I'm constantly asking God. So when... I know it appears a bit random what things I do at times and the things I say at the start. Normally, there's a purpose to it, and there's normally that I feel that God's prompted um, something to be said. But the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, builds themselves up, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. Tongues is a great great gift let me tell you it's a wonderful gift but i would rather have you prophesy the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified now brothers and sisters if i come to you and speak in tongues what good will i be to you unless i bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds such as a pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you, unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. I'll stop there. The gifts of the Spirit, and I'm, all of them, we, we need to consider a couple of things. And the first thing to consider, they come from God, okay? But that's not the first thing, though. But that, that's 
even before the first thing. But primarily, when we get together to worship and the gifts of the Spirit, we need to consider the impact on our brothers and sisters. The second thing that we need to consider when to do with the gifts of the Spirit, we need to consider how it impacts unbelievers in our meetings and in our situations. This is 1 Corinthians 14. It's just, and the third thing we need to consider, we need to consider our attitude and our approach in, in it all. That's my points. Okay, I can't preach them. Um, I will preach them another time. But I just want, I really want to say the body of Jesus is so, so important. That these gifts are given for the body. The body is designed to function so that every, every part of that body has a function and a role. You are important within this body. You've got a role and a purpose within this body. And when you're thinking about the gifts of the Spirit, they are part of your contribution to the body. As you speak a word of encouragement, that you're contributing to the body, which is what our, our calling is. And we have to consider that. Um, Do you, do you, how do you feel about that you are called to speak a word of encouragement um, and strengthening and comfort into your, the life of your brother or sister? How do you feel about that? Would you like to do that? Would you feel that actually that's part of your role as a brother and sister in Christ to speak a word of strengthening, encouraging and comfort? That's what prophecy is. <laughs> and so you need to get a word from God to speak into their lives. If you're going to bless your brother and sister like you should do, like I should do, we have to be operating in the gifts of the Spirit. We've got to eagerly desire them because you've got a role to play. That is, that's just key. So, so that's one of the things about considering other believers. Um, I'm talking about tongues, okay, speaking in tongues. You know, what was going on in um, the, the church in Corinth, that they were just giving these messages in tongues and thinking they were, the, they were great. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was bedlam, and people didn't have a clue what was going on. Or well, some people didn't have a clue what was going on. And there's a bit about, you know, when we're praying, and even in our prayer meetings, we have to pray in the Spirit, but and in our own language because how it says in um, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 15 so what shall I do I will pray with my spirit but I'll also pray with my have you got the next bit I'll pray with my understanding otherwise when you are praising God in the spirit how can someone else who's now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they do not know what you're saying you are giving thanks well enough but no one else is edified so even in our, our prayer meetings our church and stuff we have to consider the impact on how other people how we can join together in our praise and worship and so using the gifts of the spirit is important but we have to be considerate of how it functions, how it works together as a church. And it, it's not just in the church Sunday service, but it's in our connect groups, in our, in our open doors when we pray together. In the, the, we pray in the spirit, but we, we also have to be able to say amen to one another's prayers. It's interesting, I, I would say praying all together in tongues is, is great, actually, as long as you know together what you're praying about. So you pray and, you know, you say, let's pray for a breakthrough in Blackpool. Um, and, and that's what we're all going to pray together. And you pray and you pray what's on your heart for Blackpool and stuff. And then you start praying in tongues together. And you're all, all one accord as you're praying together. To me, that makes sense. To me, that, that, that is decent in order. But if, when I'm on my own, I pray in tongues to my heart's content. But when I'm together with others... 
let's do it so that we can join together as we pray or as we do it. So, so that's the thought. Um, the body is so important. I'm going to finish w- with this. Um, Ephesians 5.18, I think some of this has been happening this morning. Do not get drunk on wine. That's what we've not been doing this morning, which leads to debauchery, which we haven't been doing. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Our, the joint nature and our considering of one another in the gifts of the Spirit is so important. We've got so much to contribute. I, I think it's been great this morning, hasn't it? And it is great as a church and just all along. I, I want to say, um, in Hebrews 10 verse 24, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and as all the more as you see the day approaching. That's our encouragement. That's our, and how do we do that? We need those gifts of the Spirit to do that. But we have to consider how we're going to do that. We have to consider one another. And I just, have, I just want to drop this thought with you in terms of preparation for church. Can you consider in advance before you meet together with people, whether it's on a Sunday morning or in other groups, can you consider how you'll be able to spur your brother and sister on in the Lord? And ask God to help you and even give them a a word of encouragement, of strengthening, of comfort to bring into the lives of, so that, so that we don't actually go into our, our meetings unprepared. Could I encourage you, these are just some of my thoughts, why don't you get to church 15 minutes early or 20 minutes early and say, Lord, would you use me to encourage and speak into my brother or sister's life, somebody? And God might put something specific on your heart. Or he might give give you a particular word that 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 he's that you just he's given you a word. You say, Lord, would you bring, take me to the right person to speak that word into their lives this morning? But God cares about His body, and we've got a part to play in it. It's important. We say- Yeah.